Empathy is often regarded as the highest moral virtue. For many, it's the foundation of morality itself. Many of our cultural ideas, policies, and ethical beliefs are buttressed by the North Star of empathy, and arguing against it is tantamount to arguing against good itself. Well, in this video, I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna talk about the limitations of empathy, how empathy can misdirect our goodwill, and why simply leading with empathy doesn't make you a good person. In fact, it may be the opposite. Of course, none of what I'm about to say suggests we shouldn't be empathetic or we should try and avoid it altogether. This is merely a counter-argument to the idea that empathy in itself is the highest moral good. In Simon Baron Cohen's work, The Essential Difference, he describes empathizing as the drive to identify another person's emotions and thoughts and to respond to them with an appropriate emotion. Empathy arises out of a natural desire to care about others. So you might be thinking, how could that possibly be bad? Well, firstly, leading with empathy makes you susceptible to manipulation. Not only that, a relationship or society high in empathy implicitly encourages manipulative behavior. Sometimes when children fall over, they look around for adults before they decide whether to throw a tantrum. Even at that age, humans understand that acting hurt can elicit compassion, care, and intimacy from their kin. And if they're constantly receiving that, it trains them to act more hurt than they actually are to the point where it's not even a conscious decision to act hurt. It's ingrained behavior. In adulthood, that same tantrum can take on more complex and abstract expressions. It can take on the form of a deceptive narrative, a movement, or even a political ideology. And a society driven purely by empathy cannot differentiate between what is a mass tantrum and what is genuine pain, or whether there is a combination of both. From the other end, many people believe morality itself is synonymous with empathy. What that means is that if you want to be a good person, and if you want to feel like a good person, you need opportunities to be empathic. You might hear that and think, well, who cares? Even if there's a self-serving element, it's still good to be empathic, right? Not necessarily. There are people in relationships who take on the role of a savior. They see themselves as a healer of a wounded partner. But the dark side of that is savior types are often attracted to people who may be toxic, or they may perceive flaws in a partner where they don't actually have flaws just so they can have someone who needs saving. They might be inadvertently keeping someone in a state of dependence and victimhood to fulfill their desire to be the empathetic savior. This could be so deeply embedded in their psyche as well that they may not be doing it consciously. So when you mix someone who needs to be empathetic to feel good about themselves and someone who subconsciously acts more hurt than they are to gain intimacy, you get a horrifically toxic relationship. Extrapolate that concept out into a broader society when you have a society that needs to be empathetic to feel good about themselves and groups of people who have been conditioned to throw complex social tantrums, you get a toxic relationship on a mass scale. And from both ends, these actions are unconscious. So often if you mention this, the response is severe defensiveness and repudiation. Another major problem of putting empathy above all else is that it can misdirect your emotional capacity. You are drawn to the most emotionally compelling person or viewpoint. Let's say there are two people who have been hurt in exactly the same way, whether physically or emotionally. However, one person, person A, is just a much better communicator. They're more comfortable talking about their pain. They have a different perspective on resilience and what sort of pain is normal. Well, your empathy will be directed towards person A, even though both people have endured the exact same situation. It could be that the better communicator endured a far less severe situation, but they can communicate their pain in a more compelling way. So a highly empathic society, despite its intentions, doesn't become a society where compassion and care is directed to those who need it most. It becomes a society where compassion and care is directed to those who are the most effective communicators. This ironically even brings financial power into play, which political cause 
or movement can create the most emotionally compelling marketing campaign rather than which will do more overall good. Think about any relationship breakup or high profile celebrity disagreement. Both parties have a narrative of how they've been uniquely hard done by. And if you are driven by empathy, you support the person or people who seem like they've been the most hard done by. And in this my truth era where subcultures will validate people's perceptions of being wronged based on their ideology, it becomes so much harder to make objective decisions about justice and who actually was wronged. And the final point I'll make is that empathy doesn't scale in terms of time or people. If someone is struggling with their diet or weight, for example, being empathetic may feel good in the short term, whereas harsher boundaries or standards may feel terrible but could be more effective in the long term and thus the most compassionate course of action. And again, extrapolate that concept out to a larger society. Empathy directed towards a frustrated or upset group may feel good in the short term, but it may not be the most compassionate or morally effective course of action in the long run. Empathy tells us how to feel, but it doesn't always tell us what we should actually do. You can walk past a homeless person and feel for them. You may even assume society doesn't feel for them, therefore making you feel like a uniquely good person. But that does absolutely nothing to change their situation. All it does is give you a self-serving narrative where you're some moral hero and everyone else must be greedy and selfish. Being an empath and being utterly self-obsessed are sometimes the same thing. A government can emphasize its empathetic policies, but do they actually work? What sounds good and what feels good isn't the same as what works, especially as the web of people and inputs becomes more complex. So as beneficial and deeply human as empathy may be, it's not the ultimate expression of morality. It's obviously not something to avoid, but a healthy degree of skepticism towards emotional expression and even our own feelings is often warranted. Empathy works best as one ingredient in a complex and adaptive moral recipe. Let me know what you think in the comments and as always, thanks for watching.